A Sun Prairie teacher is receiving backlash after a social media post about the Black Lives Matter movement gets the attention of people in the community. We sit down with all six candidates running for mayor of Madison, see where they stand when it comes to issues relating to the environment. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 6. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Charlotte is off tonight. Some people are finding a Sun Prairie High School teacher's Facebook post controversial. Well, that post discusses the school's Black Lives Matter week of action and a presentation. Jamie Perez joins us in studio with more details. Jamie. That's right. So we've actually reached out to the school for comment, but they are actually not commenting at this time. But I did speak with a parent who started a conversation online to ask how we can use this as a learning experience. I'm a white male and I am prejudiced. What can I do to change, you know, to be a better American? This video was shown as part of a Black Lives Matter movement presentation at Sun Prairie High School this week. The presentation was about empathy, loving engagement, and unintentional bias. Parents like Dan Hawk agree with the points made in this presentation that this was something meant to focus on dealing with tough issues in a respectful and empathetic way. Thank you so much for being honest. Um, and for opening up this conversation because it's simply one of the most important ones we have to have in this country. A conversation that Dan said his kids found valuable. They enjoyed it. They learned, you know, they learned from it. They thought it was good. Obviously, they didn't think there was anything really wrong with it. While they didn't think something was wrong, one teacher did. They took to Facebook to post this, saying they felt forced to promote the Black Lives Matter movement, bringing up Tony Robinson and Madison PD, and saying the presentation didn't mention anything about Blue Lives Matter. It's wrong to have to bring up some other all lives matter, blue lives matter, when we're talking, the focus is on black lives right now. Not to say that anybody else, anything else doesn't matter, but right now we're talking about this. The post was shared to Facebook to help start a conversation. Many parents who wanted to remain anonymous said they agreed with Dan's sentiments, saying the teacher missed the point. As a parent, how did you perceive like what she said? Well, there's a lot of things that go through my mind. It, it doesn't show empathy. It doesn't. The same things that we were that they were talking about and they were supposed to be teaching at the moment um, are the same things that she totally disregarded. While this well, post well, is stirring up controversy well. online, Dan said he didn't share the post to get this teacher fired, but to ignite change and use it as a learning opportunity. We need to have teachers maybe spend a little more time um, in some empathy training. Get to know black families. Dan says he actually commends the school for doing this presentation at all as a way to teach people what the Black Lives Matter movement is, and he hopes to continue this conversation to make Sun Prairie better as time goes on. All right, Jamie Perez reporting. Jamie, thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Let's get a check on the weather now. The weekend is almost here. Dave Caulfield has the forecast. Dave? Well, Susan, we had plenty of sunshine on this Friday, but really that sun didn't help temperatures all that much. Highs were in the teens this afternoon. Live look in Madison on the WISC TV Skycam is showing still some twilight out there. We're actually adding about 20 minutes of daylight each week as we go forward into the rest of February. Right now we're at 14 degrees in Madison with the west northwest wind at six miles per hour. Some other temperatures out there 13 in Monroe, 15 in Lone Rock and Boscobel already into the single digits closer to La Crosse. And we are about 20 to 20. 25 degrees colder compared to this time yesterday, so big changes outside. Wind chills are still below zero in some spots and just above zero in others like Madison where it feels like five. We won't really need to worry about wind chills tonight because the winds just won't be there. It'll be pretty calm conditions. However, temperatures will fall to near zero once again as we head into the start of tomorrow. Partly sunny skies and highs a little bit warmer tomorrow in the mid 20s. We'll talk about our next chance of light snow on the way in your news three now first alert forecast in just a few minutes all right dave thank you madison's police chief says there has been a spike in the number of heroin overdoses during the past week and a toxic batch of the drug may be to blame madison police responded to 11 heroin overdoses since february 7th two of those were fatal there were 11 overdoses in january three were fatal police chief mike koval says his officers have referred seven people to the madison addiction recovery initiative a woman convicted of reckless homicide in 2007 is asking a judge to grant her a new trial based on new evidence jennifer hancock serving television
time for the death of a baby boy at her Verona home daycare back in 2007. She says the medical testimony in her 2009 trial was so flawed, the prosecution's lead medical expert no longer believes four-month-old Lincoln Wilbur was a victim of abuse. The State Journal reports the 48-year-old Hancock is scheduled for release in about three years following her 13-year prison sentence. She's represented by the Wisconsin Innocence Project, which filed a motion this week. Some Madison residents are celebrating the grand opening of a new fire station. Station 14 actually opened about a month and a half ago in a news reinvestigation prior to the new station. People living on Madison's southeast side had to wait between 10 and 15 minutes for emergency crews to respond. But since it opened, Response times have been cut down to five minutes or less. A potential 2020 presidential candidate is in Madison tonight. Beto O'Rourke will be meeting with students on the UW-Madison campus for the next hour. He is a former congressman from Texas and the first of what will likely be many potential candidates to come to Wisconsin this year. Political science experts say our state will be a key player in the 2020 election because it's one of a half dozen battleground states. But Donald Trump carrying our state in 2016, I think, definitely showed any Democratic candidate in 2020, they can't take Wisconsin for granted. So I think we'll see a lot of the Democratic field uh, in, in 2020, not just in the primary election, but also then in the general election. Tickets sold out for O'Rourke's event within about an hour this week, and there was so much interest that organizers had to set up an overflow room tonight. Beto O'Rourke also stopped in Milwaukee, and he will eventually head down to Chicago. The packed race for Madison mayor will dwindle down to two after next week's primary. And our Keely Arthur spoke with the candidate. She shares why they want the job. Keely. Well, that's right. Whoever wins, it will be historic. First is current Mayor Paul Soglin. A win for him would only solidify his long tenure in office. Challenger Sacha Rhodes Conway is a former alder and would be the first openly gay candidate to win. Current city alder Mo Cheeks, the first African American to win. Raj Shukla, the head of the River Alliance of Wisconsin, would be the first Indian American to take the job. Now, riding candidate and racial equity coordinator for the city, Toriana Petaway, would be the first African American woman and last but not least Nick Hart the first professional comedian in the position for such a historic group we asked the candidates to weigh in on an issue that seemed to impact us all last year's historic flooding. Flooding caused $154 million in damage for Dane County. The city of Madison alone spent $1.64 million in emergency operational and capital costs. Here's what the candidates have to say about it and what they would do if it happened again. Madison had a great crisis response, right? But we were not prepared for that kind of water coming at us, and we need to be. So as mayor, one of the things that I will do is a complete review of our infrastructure and our operations with respect to climate change. We have to make sure that we build our city in a way that keeps rain where it falls instead of sort of funnels it to the lakes. We do have to examine whether lake levels need to be adjusted, and the county's already initiated a process there that I fully, fully support. Protecting our people and our planet is paramount. <laughs> um, that's all we've got, right? Uh, so on the city council, um, we uh, just increased uh, the funding this past year, acted with a sense of urgency uh, to increase funding for stormwater management and for planning to, to take care of our lakes and take care of our people. As mayor, um, I'm going to institute, uh, I'm going to create a position that's going to be focused on that, a deputy uh, to the mayor's office that's um, specifically focused on the environment. Short-term solutions is not the answers like lowering the lakes. That, that's not the solutions because what we do in Madison and the lakes that impact us directly is also going to have an impact on other communities downstream. We have to put our world's best at the table with us and let them inform us on how to plan, how to build, how to create good infrastructure when these things happen. Current Madison Mayor Paul Soglin spoke to the city's successful emergency response, but gave all the credit to the team he is surrounded by. If the mayor's done a good job, when that happens, the mayor is not needed. In other words, you put together a management strategy, you make sure you've got well-trained and, and uh, great leaders within the organization. And so when that crisis occurs, they're out there and they know how to do the job.
Unfortunately, Nick Hart was unavailable to be interviewed. The primary vote is next Tuesday. The two with the most votes will advance to the general election in April. And I spoke with the candidates about a whole lot more that is up on our website, Channel 3000. We will also have more on News 3 Now at 10. All right, yeah, that's coming up quick. A lot of people don't realize this is next Tuesday. Tuesday, so right. Be ready. All right, Keely, thank you. Thanks, Keely. Spanish language ballots will be available at every polling place in Dane County. Currently, the town of Madison is the only jurisdiction in Dane County required to offer Spanish ballots to stay in compliance with federal requirements. County Clerk Scott McDonald says the bilingual ballots will be available on the handicap accessible machines and people can select what language they would like to use, similar to how they would use an ATM. Early voting is currently underway for the 2019 spring primary, as we said, which is Tuesday the 19th. Early voting is currently underway for the primary uh, as well, and we're going to be monitoring the races next, uh, next, uh, next week as we bring you the results as they come in. There is a push to help people convicted of crimes get better jobs. And troubling news when it comes to Wisconsin and schools offering free and reduced meals at school. The results of a new nationwide survey next at 6. Local attorneys, along with the Urban League of Greater Madison, are helping those with past convictions or arrests erase them from their records. A criminal background is a huge barrier to getting a well-paying job, so local attorneys want to help people both understand what comes up in their background check and if and how they can get rid of that criminal record. Now, you can prove you weren't convicted of a crime you were arrested for or meet requirements to expunge a conviction. Aubrey Johnson currently does maintenance for Dane County but says things he did back when he was 19 and 24 years old are preventing him from moving up and getting a better position. They're like, no, I'm sorry, you know, your record checks out. We have a lot of good um, references and stuff, but due to the stuff that you have on your record, we can't do anything at this time. So it really kind of hurt me, you know what I mean? So I had to take a lot uh, lower paying jobs, you know, throughout my last 20 years. Well, he hopes once he works to expunge his criminal record, he can take better care of his family. Although attorneys say this isn't easy. Wisconsin's expungement laws are pretty restrictive. They say this is the only state where you have to prove you deserve an expungement right when you're sentenced. There will be more clinics like today scheduled in Dane County this year, also funded by the county. There is a bill currently looking for sponsors that would expand the number of people eligible for expungement. 
Wisconsin ranks as one of the worst states in the country when it comes to using a federal program to feed students breakfast. The Food Research and Action Center came out with its breakfast report card this week and says only two states met their goal of feeding 70 low-income students in the mornings. Less than 85 percent of Wisconsin schools that offered lunch also offered breakfast last school year, and that makes Wisconsin one of just a handful of other states where that's the case. Most states around the country have breakfast at more than 90 percent of schools where free lunches are served. And five states have it at nearly all of those schools. Still ahead, more snow is on the way. Gary is breaking down what we could see this weekend coming up next in the First Alert forecast. Time to check on our forecast, our first alert weather for the weekend. And Gary joining us live at one of his favorite places on the planet at the circus. Gary? You bet. It's Azor Shrine Circus uh, starting here actually in uh, about 45 minutes. Our, the first show of several this weekend. We'll have more on the show times uh, later on. but. You know, in order to get here, the weather has to be pretty nice, and tonight it actually is nice. Uh, skies have been generally clear to partly cloudy, but temperatures have been on the cold side. In fact, as we take a look at Doppler track, you can see things pretty quiet around here. There's a weather system that's bringing some snow to our south. That'll stay to the south, but we'll see another system on Sunday that could bring some light snow at that time. Otherwise, as we uh, go ahead and take a look at the, the uh, winter weather bulletins, there already are winter weather advisories for much of Iowa. This is for uh, late Saturday night into Sunday for the possibility for a few inches of snow. Temperatures right now on the cold side, single digits and lower to middle teens. These temperatures will be cold again for tonight, but with less wind, there shouldn't be as much of a wind chill. Live view from the Edgewater Sky Cam in downtown Madison. Skies are partly cloudy right now. The almanac for today shows a high of 20, but that was early this morning. We dropped to two degrees then around six or seven o'clock this morning. Temperatures came back up into the middle teens. Right now we're at 14 degrees with winds out of the west northwest at six miles per hour. Wind chill is at five degrees above zero. As we take a look at the uh, weather track across the country, 
you can see that system to our south bringing some snow down towards St. Louis and into parts of Missouri. Our weather system is actually back in, in Montana and North Dakota, and that one doesn't have nearly as much moisture associated with it. So the good news is uh, high pressure is in between us and that snow, so we'll see quiet weather for tonight, tomorrow, and then uh, later tomorrow night into Sunday. Some of that snow out in Montana will start reaching us in the form of just some, some light snow or flurries. Temperatures are pretty cold up to the north, below zero in Bismarck, North Dakota. We're in the mid-teens here, but to the south, temperatures are a little bit milder. So for tonight, look for a low of 2 degrees, partly cloudy skies, very cold for tonight, but tomorrow we're back up to 25, so not quite as cold, and skies will be partly sunny through the day. Now as we check out future track, again, those temperatures will drop off very quickly tonight, thanks to the uh, clear or partly cloudy skies and light winds, but tomorrow we should be back up into the middle 20s, thanks to the uh, partly sunny skies. Tomorrow night, the clouds will start moving in. We'll see snow develop late. Temperatures will actually start rising toward morning. And on Sunday, look for highs in the mid to upper 20s, but some off and on snow through the day. As far as snowfall amounts are concerned, we're looking at a, probably about a one to three inch snowfall through much of southern Wisconsin. Again, the heavier amounts are farther out toward the west into Iowa and maybe down uh, toward Lake Michigan and southeastern Wisconsin. The 10 day forecast, well, you can see those temperatures generally uh, slightly below normal for the first part of the uh, of the uh, time, but then uh, we'll be back into the lower 30s for fri uh, Thursday and Friday, some light snow fri uh, on Wednesday, and then uh, some light snow as we head toward next weekend. Now, I just looked behind me, and guess what? We have the elephants out here behind us. So the elephants uh, are already on the floor. I see people taking uh, their rides on them. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the information on the circus. Uh, the first show is tonight at 7 p.m. We also have shows tomorrow night, uh, tomorrow during the day at 10 a.m., 2.30 p.m., and 7 p.m., and then also on Sunday, 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. So uh, it's over here at the Coliseum next to the Line Energy Center. Uh, come on out. The, like I said, first show is tonight at 7, but there are three shows tomorrow and two more on Sunday. It is the Zor Shrine Circus. Don't miss it. The state boys swimming and diving meet begins at the natatorium. Can Edgewood take the first step to a title? The story's coming up in sports.
The parade of state high school championships to Madison has begun. This weekend, it's the WIA State Swimming and Diving Meet at the UW Natatorium Division II competition today, Division I tomorrow. Edgewood is the pre-meet favorite to win Division II, and the Crusaders get off to a great start in diving as Ben Stitchin wins his second straight state title. He's only a sophomore, and now he's two for two. If he keeps that up, he could be only the third person to win four state diving championships. Edgewood's Ryan Jefferson and Whitefish Bay's Joe Kazabowski won four times. Ben Stitchin is now halfway there. Badger women's hockey team gets its weekend off to a good start at Minnesota Duluth this afternoon. Emily Clark scores twice. Presley Norby, Annie Pankowski, Sophie Shirley, and Sam Kogan also get goals. Final scores, Wisconsin 6, Minnesota Duluth 1. The Badger men's team just started its game at Notre Dame tonight. The Badger men's basketball team got today off. That's always a good break to slip in this late in the regular season. After losing to Michigan State Tuesday night, the Badgers' next game isn't until this coming Monday at 7 when Illinois is at the Kohl Center. The season started in early November. 25 games later, junior guard Demetri Trice says he's getting a breather now. Well, that's great, especially after Tuesday's loss. I would say it's a plus and a minus. Um, we have a longer time to think about what we did wrong. Um, I'd say that's the, the minus, I would say. Um, but it's a good time to rest our bodies, um, recover, um, have really good practices. we got a couple days um, ahead of what Illinois has. Um, our bodies will be adjusted to it by then. This is a process, and um, you got to have fun with what you do. So through the ups and downs, we just got to stick together um, and then uh, just stick, stick into what we know how to do. The weather got a little better, better for Brewers spring training in Arizona today. It got into the upper 60s, but it's going to get colder now. High temperatures should be in the 50s for most of next week. Brewers, of course, coming off one of their most successful seasons in history, getting one win away from the World Series. With a lot of that team coming back, you'd expect they'd have a chance at having another great season in 2019. Craig Council says that's true, but right now, that's not even a consideration. This team, this underline this, hasn't accomplished anything. This is a new team, and we, we, we've got to make our kind of own tracks here. We're going to have different challenges. There's going to be a different set of challenges placed in front of the team and in front of, you know, these guys, guys that were very successful. The formula is likely to be different in some way. And so, um, you know, you just, you just hope and their successes and their struggles, it's, it's, going, to, it's going to be different. Our next Prep Mania game of the week is Tuesday night when Sun Prairie visits Madison LaFollette in boys basketball. The last time they played, it was 105-104 in two overtimes. Perhaps the same awaits us Tuesday night. Sun Prairie LaFollette live at 7.15 on Channel3000.com. Russian President Vladimir Putin played in a hockey game in Sochi. Putin had sprained a finger sparring with Olympic judo champions earlier, but still suited up for the game. Putin and Belarus President Alexander Lukashenko were on the same team. Putin and Lukashenko won 16 to 1. Putin was named man of the match. He scored seven goals. <laughs> Guessing he's pretty tough to beat on his home ice. What goalie is going to huh? stop that? Yeah, exactly. He's get out of the way. <laughs> get suspended or worse, I guess. <laughs> yeah, he'd be in trouble. All right, Dave, final check. Yeah, temperatures will be going down once again tonight, close to zero, which is how many goals I thought the other team would score <laughs> on Putin, but they allowed one. We are looking at another cold night as we head into tomorrow morning, and then an alert day in the forecast for Sunday. Some minor snow accumulations possible through Sunday evening. All right, Dave, thank you. Thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 6. Have a good weekend, everybody. See you back here tonight at 10.